the Bears defense is alive and well. Akeem Hicks is back and disrupting plays with 13 quarterback hits and five tackles for loss on the season. Khalil Mack has five and a half sacks. Eddie Jackson is one of the best safeties in the league. And Kyle Fuller is allowing just a 51.5% completion percentage. To have a truly elite defense though, you need to have a secondary and a front that work together. The Bears like to move their secondary players around at the snap to force quarterbacks to diagnose things on the fly and adjust in real time. It can cause them to make poor decisions or hold the ball for a half second longer to allow the Bears pass rush to get home. It sounds simple, but being static can often be a death sentence for defenses. If you don't give teams something to think about at the snap, you're conceding that it's going to be your guys versus theirs. Moving your pieces around gives the advantage back to the defense and is part of the reason why Chicago has allowed just 58.7% of passes to be completed this season. The Bears are predominantly a one-high safety team and play a lot of cover three and cover one. They'll often show two high safeties though because they want to force quarterbacks to process and figure out what's going on post-snap. At the snap of the ball or leading up to the snap, they'll rotate their safeties to change their pre-snap look. Often, this leads to them running cover one robber. Cover one just means that there's one high safety and man coverage everywhere else on the field, and robber is describing the action of the other safety because he's going to drop down at the snap and rob the middle of the field. This robber player is free to jump any routes that flash in front of him. Cover one robber can be used to prevent slants, quick hitting hooks underneath, or crossing routes. Here the Giants are running a common play which is a chains concept, where the receivers get to the first down marker and turn around for the ball. The Bears are running their cover one robber to the trip side so that they can help Roquan Smith in coverage. Smith knows that he has a robber behind him so he can now bracket to the inside of the tight end. The corner to the top of the screen also knows you can play with outside leverage and funnel inside because the robber will be there to pick up any crossers. The robber frees up other players to play with more conservative leverage and funnel things inside to both the free safety over the top and the robber over the middle. Daniel Jones here is reading that Roquan Smith is way inside on his tight end, so he's determining pre-snap that's the route he wants. The tight end is going to turn around right at the sticks and with two safeties over the top and with leverage on the linebacker, it should be an easy completion. What Jones doesn't see though is Eddie Jackson dropping down to rob the route. Jackson knows the routes are coming based on the down and distance and keys off of Jones's eyes. He breaks on the route and causes the ball to be popped up into the air. You can see in this play how cover one robber looks when coming down on a crossing route. The Bears show too high before the late rotate back to center field by Tashawn Gibson and the robber, Eddie Jackson, sits right in the middle of the field waiting for an in-breaking route to rob. The Lions are running a dig route across the middle of the field and Eddie Jackson is sitting in the deep hole ready to break on it. Stafford doesn't see it and Jackson is able to break on it and pop the ball in the air again for an interception. Really this robber look is just designed to cause hesitation on routes in the middle of the field, set the safety up with angles to make a play on the ball, or force the offense to make throws outside where the Bears are getting really really good play out of their corners Kyle Fuller and their rookie Jalen Johnson. For example, here the Falcons use pre-snap motion to try and diagnose what the Bears are doing. When the receiver shifts over and the corner comes with him, that's a man coverage indicator. You pair that with two high safeties and you expect to see two man under, which gives the defense two deep players in each half of the field and man coverage underneath. So if you're Matt Ryan, what's a route that you love here? The Falcons are running two crossers behind each other across the field. Based on leverage and having a shallow drag route to the top of the screen, He's going to want to hit the first crosser because that receiver has inside leverage on the slot defender. The shallow by the tight end at the top will pull the defender to that side and he sees the boundary side safety getting depth at the snap. What he doesn't expect is for Eddie Jackson to again be in that robber look coming down from the four receiver side. Jackson comes down right in front of that crosser which is where Ryan is looking first. Ryan sees that the crosser is bracketed but by that time is feeling pressure. He has to come off of the read and throw short for an incompletion. Similar to cover one robber, the Bears also use jump calls against teams that like to run a lot of deep crossers like the Rams did in week 7. The Rams run a ton of tight formations and drag their receivers across on deep over routes in their play action game. The Bears method of combating that was to use jump calls. A jump call is very similar to using a robber but it takes a little bit more communication and understanding from the defense. With a jump call, the safety is coming down on the crossing route and the corner that was initially over that route replaces them in the middle of the field instead of chasing that route across the field. 
The Bears use this coverage on the single receiver side of the formation so that that corner isn't going to be immediately threatened in their half of the field when they vacate it. For the purposes of this play, the slice behind the formation by that receiver in the slot turns us into a single receiver side to the bottom of the screen after the snap of the ball. This jump call allows the Bears to keep the integrity of their defense and bypass traffic in the middle of the field while picking up crossers from the safety position with an angle to make a tackle or a play on the ball. So the Bears run a lot of the cover one robber, typically with the robber coming from the trip side. They'll throw in those jump calls and then they'll also invert that and show a one high safety look and then bail out of that into cover two trap, which can also be called palms or a number of other things. Palms is popular against spread formations and two receiver sets, which is what we have here against the Panthers. It's essentially cover two with match coverage principles tied into it. The corners on the outside are keying the number two receivers on the inside. If the number two receiver has an outbreaking route, the corner is going to carry the number one receiver until they see it and then immediately drop it to jump the out route by the number two. If that's the case, the safety over the top would then pick up number one as they go vertical. The linebackers then help to bracket any in-breaking crossers like a dig or a slant. That's what the Bears are running here. The problem that Teddy Bridgewater and the Panthers have is that Chicago is showing single high, which either means cover one or cover three. In either case, Teddy likes the matchups and leverage of his routes to the top of the screen. The number one goes vertical, the number two runs a wheel right behind it, and the running back runs an arrow out into the flats. In the Bears' palms coverage, the corner is going to pass off that vertical to the safety coming over the top and jump the outbreaking route from the number two. He then carries that wheel up the sideline since he's now in man coverage on that route. The slot defender is bracketing but has no inbreakers, so he runs to the running back in the flats. Everything is covered. Normally, though, in a cover three or in man, that initial vertical would pull the corner deep. The number two running the wheel route would be carried by the slot defender who would normally have the flats in cover three, and now there would be no flat defender to pick up that running back since that defender carried the wheel. In cover one, you'd be one-on-one -on -one with your running back on a linebacker and man. All matchups you would probably like. So Teddy looks that way off the snap, but sees the Bears are rotating into that cover two look with two high safeties and the safety getting over the top of the vertical from the number one. He knows that that side of the field is going to be covered and tries to get back over to the bottom of the screen. By then though, the corner has broken on the slant from Robbie Anderson, Teddy has to move out of the pocket, and the Bears close in for a sack. It's the, the perfect marriage of a coverage and a pressure working together, and, and that's what makes those rotates and post snap movements so effective for defenses. One second of pause from the quarterback and all of a sudden your pass rush can get home for a big play to get a sack and put the offense in a really difficult position. Here's another example of cover two at the bottom of the screen with the Bears again giving a late rotate into the two high safety look. The corner is again keying the number two receiver for an outbreaking route and leaving any crosser or vertical route for the safety or the linebacker. The corner takes the quick out and the linebacker now brackets and gets inside of the post from number one. Bridgewater knows the Bears like to have their Robert at the trip side, and the Bears had run a single high look with man coverage earlier in this game against the Panthers' empty formations, so that's exactly what Bridgewater is looking for here. The Bears instead rotate the middle field safety over and drop Eddie Jackson into the deep seam to the trip side. Normally, offenses will have reads versus defenses when they're showing middle of the field open with two high safeties, and different routes or reads versus middle of the field closed with one high safety. In this case, DJ Moore has an option route of running a dig versus a one high or a post versus a two high look. You want to attack the weakness of the defense. Because of the strong rush and the late rotate, Teddy still thinks it's a one high look, and that means it's either man or cover three. So he's expecting a dig from DJ Moore. Meanwhile, Moore is seeing the rotate by the safety and breaks for a post to exploit that vacated middle of the field which really is wide open. If, if Teddy throws the ball down the field, it's, it's probably a touchdown or a huge gain. But because he doesn't see the rotate and the rush is getting home, he throws the dig right into the linebacker who has bracketed the in-breaking route. It's an interception that ultimately seals the game and prevents the Panthers from continuing their potential game-tying drive. The Bears are sitting at five and two and are right in the mix of things in the NFC playoff picture. Their defense is getting to the quarterback, locking down receivers, and confusing quarterbacks into holding the ball and making mistakes. With the marriage of an elite secondary and a defensive line that can cause pressure, the Bears have all the pieces to the puzzle on defense. 
The offense might have its ups and downs, but as the old saying goes, and as Bear fans are hoping is true, defense wins championships. Hey guys, make sure to check out the Patreon for weekly game picks, some extra bonus content and video breakdowns every week. There's also early releases for these full breakdowns. You can donate just $1 a month and that gives you access to all of it. I appreciate you guys tuning in and until next time, I'm Casey Sully and I'll see you on the next film breakdown.